Hello, welcome to the Edit Bay. Today we are talking about vintage camcorders and my AVCHD workflow in Final Cut Pro. I've got here the Canon Vixia HF100, an awesome little camcorder that I picked up. The one I originally bought actually died somehow on the drive home from Chicago. I think it got a little hot in the back of my truck and it maybe wiped it out, but I picked up this replacement one that was in even better condition on eBay. This is a high definition camcorder, but this writes to a file format called AVCHD, and it can be a little tricky to work with when importing into Finder and into Final Cut Pro. And I have a workflow that I like to use, so we're gonna go over that right now. So we're gonna pull the SD card out, because I use this camcorder to film a channel member video. A lot of my channel member videos I use my camcorders for, because it reduces the amount of file storage that's required. And it's a lot more fun for me to make a video with these older cameras rather than this one, the EOS R, even though you can argue that one looks a lot better. So we'll put this SD card, a 16 gig SD card into the old SD card slot on my Mac Studio. And we'll start the import process. And we've got our SD card here, private AVCHD. With modern cameras, you can usually see a list of video files there that show what clips you have, but this one doesn't. We can right click and choose show package contents and you can start trying to get into the AVCHD file. Uh, I think you can even maybe right click here, show package contents, and you can really get in there to see these files, the MTS files. So this is what you would have to do to access the actual video file on the AVCHD. I don't really like to do that because I'm always worried that something's gonna get goofed up, the metadata, whatever it is. Uh, so I don't like to pull the MTS files out of the AVCHD wrapper. So normally what I would do with footage from a camera is I would select it all here in Finder and drag it into my corresponding project folder in the media film folder. You can do something a little bit different since the AVCHD file format is a lot different than just a standard list of MP4 video files. I'm actually gonna have Final Cut look at this and import it directly into Final Cut. So let's go through opening up my Final Cut library and getting all that set up. So we're gonna update this. And so I have my day in the life Final Cut library and using my Final Cut Pro library template, I already have all of my events with keyword collections and smart collections ready to go so I don't have to create this every time I start a new video. So I'm gonna select the footage event and start the import process. So we've got here this Canon SD card and it has all the uh, footage on it. It's viewing it through that AVCHD wrapper, right? So I'm gonna select all this and it's okay that this is gonna copy to library. Normally I don't do that, but I want it to do that with this and I'll explain why in a little bit. So that's all we're going to do. We're gonna import selected and it's going to go through the import process. I'm gonna pull open this window just so we can track that progress. And this is probably gonna take a little while for it to import it all and that's fine. We'll go through that process and then I'll show you what I do with the files once they're imported into Final Cut Pro. So here we go. Let's get this a little bit more browser friendly. Just got a bunch of clips of me vlogging around the old studio. What's next? What this did was it imported this into the Final Cut Pro library. Now we can't reveal this in Finder, that's okay. We're gonna go to Finder and reveal it ourselves by right-clicking the Final Cut Pro library, choosing Show Package Contents, going to the footage event, original media, and you can see all of our clips in a QuickTime format are here. Final Cut Pro looked inside that AVCHD file, saw the MTS stream files, imported them in and put them into a nice little QuickTime format. So we have everything stored here, but I really want this stuff also stored in the original media folder in my Finder library template. So YouTube members, 058, media, film, and then our footage here. So I'm just gonna make a folder that says Vixia HF100, and I'm gonna select all of these, and then option, click, and drag over here. Because I don't wanna move them from here, I want to copy them over to here. So now we have all these clips. 
but I want to have custom names for these in Finder. So I'm going to go to a better Finder rename, which is an app I use all the time. You can use you can use Finder to rename your clips, but I've just been in the habit of using a better Finder rename. So that's what I use. So now we have episode uh, t number 058, and then I'm going to call this day in the life, which is just D-I-L. Yeah, I'll just call this video and then Matthew and then HF100. And then I'm going to put this back down to one. Okay, so it's going to rename all of my files. Command R, hit OK. And now all those files are renamed. So something that I'm going to do to make sure that on the surface, these files mirror the names of these files is I'm going to copy and paste these file names over into Final Cut Pro. So I'm going to select this, do that, and then I'm going to cl click this and hit paste. Then I'm going to go to this one, Command-C, go back to Final Cut, and then paste. Go here and then repeat this process over and over. Now you can see if this was a massive project with like a hundred video clips, this would be a little bit ridiculous to do this. But since it's only just a few clips, I really want these to match. Now something else I could do is I could delete all of these out of here and I could re-import from here. But since it's just so few files, I don't really need to do that. And I'm okay with Final Cut Pro storing 15 gigabytes of footage inside the library and outside the library. And I'll tell you why in a second. Let me just finish copying and pasting these over. The reason I want them visible in Finder and not sort of stored inside the Final Cut library exclusively is if I ever want to pull a clip from the archives to use as B-roll in a later video, it's much easier for me to get access to it through the Finder folder system, then going to Project Files, going to Final Cut, right-clicking Choose Show Package Contents, or opening the Final Cut library and clicking and dragging this from one library to another. I just really like everything to be based around Finder. That's how my brain works. So you might be watching this and going, dude, this is so overkill. Why are you going through all this? Again, this is how my brain sort of sees the organization of all this and sees how to easily access these files in the future. I could easily cut out a lot of the components of this workflow to get me from importing the footage from this camera into Final Cut and editing as soon as possible, but I'm always trying to make my future self happy and happy with my present self because there could be issues frustrations, whatever, with doing this as quickly as possible to get to editing. I want to really think through and look into my crystal ball and go, where might not taking these steps cause issues down the road? So let's be disciplined, take the steps to get this footage the way that you need it for the future, and take care of it now instead of dealing with the ramifications of not taking care of it now later. So that's sort of a long-winded explanation of how I use the AVC HD file format with these old Canon camcorders or even a, a cinema camera like the Canon C100 Mark I. That camera used AVC HD as well and I used a similar workflow when I worked with that camera system. So something to keep in mind if you're using some retro tech in your content creation workflow when you're working with Final Cut Pro, this is what I like to do with my AVCHD workflow. Now, if you have some tips or suggestions for what I could do that's better or more streamlined, certainly drop those down in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback. Just like I'm teaching, I'm also always learning. If you're curious about my Finder and Final Cut Pro library templates, I'll put a link to all of that down in the description below where you can purchase those templates and where you can watch a video to see a more in-depth workflow and sort of my reasoning for using these templates in my workflow. So definitely check that out down in the description. And then if you're interested in becoming a channel member, I have channel memberships that start at 99 cents a month all the way up to $20 a month. Those channel memberships can get you access to my templates, my Discord server, and it gets you exclusive channel member only content. That tends to be a little bit more vlog style about what's going on in my studio, going on with my YouTube channel, uh, but I do want to incorporate more Final Cut Pro education, data management education, post-production education in those channel member videos. So definitely look at 
checking out uh, those membership tiers and what you get for each tier. Okay, so ABC HD, retro camcorders, all kinds of fun stuff in Final Cut Pro. Thanks everyone for watching. Until the next one, I'll see y'all soon. Don't forget, keep chopping that broccoli.